Hello and welcome to the second video in this series making, I can't remember what I've called it, Simple Floppy Robin, uh, which is sort of this floppy bird ripoff, um, which is just to demonstrate how the techniques are used uh, as a tutorial. So where are we? Well, the last video we talked a bit about how things were going to go and the structure of the project. As I explained in the last video, I will be working in Xcode with the Mac project but uh, it shouldn't make a difference whether you're on Linux, Windows or the Mac because we'll be working in the classes folder and with the code in there and because everything in Cocos 2DX is nice and cross-platform and using this framework it shouldn't make any kind of difference if there are problems then please put a comment in the comment section for the video okay so what are we going to do well we have set up our app controller to have our 960 by 640 and in this video what I want to do is talk a little bit about how things are set up inside the classes here and um, then maybe add the background image onto our screen. If I go into appdelegate.cpp you'll see that we've got a function called application did finish launching and this does what it says on the tin when the application's finished launching the code inside here is then run. And the real big important part inside this code is that Cocos 2DX Framework makes a singleton called a CC director. And you access this using the shared director static function here to get the instance of it. And the director does all sorts of good stuff in your application. It allows you to, as you can see here, set the display stats, animation interval, most important, well, not most importantly, but one of the most important things it does is actually run your scenes, which will explain what they are shortly, and it allows you to get the size of your screen and various other things as well. So it's a critical thing to know and use. The way the applications run under this Cocos 2DX framework is they run with what are called scenes and layers. And the best way I can think of describing this without showing any images is if you imagine an art program, which I'm sure you've used like GIMP or Inkscape or Photoshop or something like this, you have your image and when you're making your image, usually you work with one or more layers in that image. And that's exactly how this framework works. The scene can be thought of as your image and it's what you're seeing on the screen, but then the images on the screen are then uh, placed on layers and these layers are then um, added to your scene. So exactly the same way you build an image in Photoshop or GIMP or Inkscape or something like that. And the, what's happening here is inside the app delegate the scene a pointer to a scene, so a scene object, CC scene, is being accessed by calling the static function on a hello world class which we'll have a look at and then the director is being told run this scene, so run the scene. Now you may be wondering okay where is all this coming from? Well it's coming from this hello world scene.h file where we have our hello world class but oddly enough this hello world class subclasses a CC layer so it's a layer. So the question is, is where, where is the scene? Well in some applications you'll have instances where you want more than one layer and in this case what you'd normally do is create a class so our hello world scene which subclass is cc scene and then you would create, create separate classes for your layers and add those layers one by one to your scene however also in plenty of applications including uh, traffic light mania um, there's only one layer on each scene so there's a shortcut way of doing this and that is inside your class which subclass is cc layer is to have a static function here which actually returns a scene and if we go into hello world scene.cpp you'll see that the scene is actually created when this is called so inside our app delegate we create the scene there by calling this scene function we then also create an instance of hello world layer it's added here with add child to the scene and the scene is then returned so everything's done in the sort of compressed format to save a little bit of space. It's just a, a little shortcut, which you'll also see in the iOS version, so Cocos 2D for iPhone. The main sort of nuts and bolts of setting up, however, what goes on on your screen is done inside this init function here, so the initialize, and also on here is a callback for pressing the close button, but we're not going to be needing any of that. So the first thing I want to do without any uh, further ado is go into hello world scene.h and just remove this menu close callback because we're not going to be using it. And then inside hello world scene.cpp go down to the bottom of the file and remove menu close callback. 
and also then uh, inside the initialization here from below where we get the origin here take all this code here right down to the return true and just delete all of that as well because we don't need it so what we essentially have now is a blank application so what we need to do now then is think about the next steps the next step we want to do is add just for this video the background image onto our application so you remember that we have our resources folder here inside Xcode and also inside our application I'm just trying to find the window here I'm sure I had it open yes inside our application we also have the resources here and inside here we've got the background HD and the Robin dash HD the dash HD I'll explain later it's there for when we start using multiple resolutions or multiple um, image resolutions for different screen sizes but we need to actually inside Xcode anyway and probably the same in Visual Studio actually add links to these inside the resources folder here so I just go right click and add files and then you'll already see uh, inside here I've got the resources I just select both of the files here I make sure that I haven't got copy ticked because I don't want to copy them but I do have it adding to target and then just click add and those are now added in so I've got the background here and the little robin there good so the next thing to do is actually to add this background then onto our screen and in the Coco Studio X framework the way almost all images are represented on the screen is by using what's called a CC sprite object which is spelt like so it's already there and you basically create a pointer to a sprite so we have our background sprite our BG sprite and to create one from a file you simply use create and supply inside here the file name which in our case is bg-hd.png now there are in the, the way we're going to certainly for the the this the initialization of this application use our sprites is by creating them from the images because we won't have that many in the application if you have lots of sprites then you really need to look at using something called sprite sheets which maybe I'll talk about in this application later on or maybe in another tutorial but for this suffice to say we create our sprite from our image its size is the size of our image and all we need to do is position our sprite onto the screen before I do that however I just want to show you something that when I call the background sprite it has a function called set anchor point because there's a property called an anchor point which is really important to understand with sprites with their positioning I'll just remove this when you set the point for your anchor sprite the point for X and Y is 0 to 1 for each of them and this says that when you're specifying the point that the sprite will be positioned on the screen where in the sprite itself that point should be so in case that's a little bit confusing if I go back to the uh, background here um, the anchor point by default for images is 0 0.5 by 0 0.5 that means halfway along the X and halfway along the Y that means if I say I want this image positioned at 100 by 100 it will take the point represented by its anchor point and put that point at 100 by 100 so the middle of this sprite would go at 100 by 100 so if I want this to be in the middle of the screen because it's the same size as the screen the anchor point by default is halfway along the X and the Y so I want to position the middle of this on the middle of our screen hopefully that makes some sort of sense so what I want to do is I want to say the BG sprite and there is set position and I need to supply as an argument a point for this position here and there's a shortcut provided by the framework if you type CCP just to give an X and a Y to create a point object a CC point object and inside here then I want to take our visible size dot width divided by 2 for the X and our visible size dot height divided by 2 then for the Y and the last thing I need to do then is 
Like we did up here where we added the child to the scene, added the layer to the scene as a child, we need to add this sprite to our layer as a child as well. So we can say this and then add child and we'll add our BG sprite. And what we're also going to do is going to specify something called a Z index. And we're going to put zero. And a Z index specifies what goes on top of what. So if I now add another image with a Z index of minus one, it will be positioned behind this sprite and won't be visible. If I added it with one, it would be in front of. If items or images have the same Z index, then they are positioned on top of each other according to the order in which they're added on the layer. So if I now say had another image, BG sprite 2, which obviously is not defined, and added it here with naught, this would be the visible image because it covers up this one. If I put this one here instead, then this one would be the visible one because it comes in front of this one. However, if I change this to a 1, then this would be the visible one because it has a higher Z index. Z index. Hopefully that's clear. And one thing I want to do before we run the uh, program and have a look at our nice background is I don't like doing this in programs, having numbers. So I'm going to go to classes and right click and I'm going to do a new file. I'm going to in uh, C and C++ click header file and just call this constants.h, tick the target, simple floppy robin and hit create. And inside here, I'm just going to define, I'm going to call it KZ index, and let's call it uh, background, and we'll just set this to zero. I know it seems a little um, silly to add some extra, uh, extra file just for this, but um, later on, things can get confusing with Z index, and it's best to have a constant. And of course, we need to add in our hello world scene um, dot, CP, uh, dot cpp that we want to include our constants header as well, like so. Okay, so I'll give this application a run then and cross my fingers. And you'll see that the application is now filed, f fired up. Okay, the title's wrong on the title bar, it doesn't matter. And we've got our background positioned centrally on our screen. These here are some indicators of the performance. The top number here is how many drawing operations the app is having to perform every update cycle, which is a target of 60 frames a second. And the important number, we can ignore this number in the middle, and this number here is important, how many frames a second the application is running at. And generally you want to be hitting around the 60. Uh, sometimes at the moment it's drifting away, I notice a bit sometimes when I move the mouse. Also there are some other applications running recording this video and the sound, etc, etc. But generally on most devices when you test, you want to be around the 60 here. So I'll just stop that now. And we've already been going for 13 minutes I see, so I'll make the end of the video here. In the next video then, we'll look at detecting touches on the screen and then we can look at positioning our little robin on the screen. So I hope that made some sense and thanks very much for watching and comments, questions, criticisms, welcome as always on YouTube.